Good note. All right, the undefeated Patriots got some defeating news yesterday. They had to place all-pro kicker Steven Guskowski on IR with a season-ending hip injury. CC, how serious is this for New England? Well, let me tell you that that IR bus they got is crowded. <laughs> I mean, it's got a lot of talented players on there, and they can only bring two of those back. Nick, I thought two weeks ago when you pointed out that New England, that this this IR bus was starting to get full, and now one of the most important aspects of the Patriot way has been their kicking game. We tend to miss on that. Every Super Bowl they've won has been a tightly contested game, and their kickers have allowed them to be on this magical carpet ride they've been on for 20 years. This is a big injury. It, they have had an uninterrupted 25-year run, dating from 96 to now, of Hall of Fame caliber kickers. I'm not saying Goskowski yes. is going to be a Hall of Famer. The only time they haven't had Vinatieri or Goskowski was an eight-game stretch in 2010. I think this is an enormous loss for New England. I think this was the biggest news in the sports world yesterday because if they're going to try to win games with great defense, minimal offense, what's the third key to that? Great special teams. Yes. Now they're going to be one of the many. They're trying out your guy, Blair Walsh. See, I mean, uh, right. They, they, uh, all of a sudden, we're Placement level kicking in. Blair Walsh missed the chip shot. Vikings versus Seattle. Teddy Bridgewater's only playoff game. And so this is this is a huge news that could have reverberating effects throughout the season. All right, moving on. Saquon Barkley was jogging at Giants practice yesterday, just 10 days after suffering a high ankle sprain. And head coach Pat Shermer refused to rule him out for Sunday's game against the Vikings. CC, bad idea to rush Barkley back, especially against that Vikings defense? Well, two weeks is about the earliest that you can come back. I mean, he's a freak athlete, Jenna. Even the movement exercise and stuff he was doing yesterday was phenomenal after hurting it two weeks ago. I would be shocked after seeing yesterday's video that he does not play wow. against the Vikings. Yes, he's going to play against the Vikings, force that eight people in the box, give Danny Dimes some free-throwing lanes on the outside. I would be shocked after seeing the video yesterday. You asked me this yesterday, I've been like, no, I believe he's going to take another but week off. Three weeks would be the perfect amount. And then I saw him bouncing around yesterday. Man, I mean, he's an incredible athlete, too. For a skill position guy that relies on cha change of pace and change of direction, a month is a quick recovery from a high ankle sprain. Yes. The fact that he could be back after only missing one full game would be remarkable. I, listen, some guys are just built differently. See, you sprint, You had a high ankle sprain, yep. what, 10, 11 days later? Yep, came back in two weeks. All right, did uh, a buck 70 in the first it's half. It's a lot easier somebody. to play wide receiver than it is to play running back because I can anticipate where I'm going. As a running back, someone flash on you, suddenly you got to try to recruit the muscles. You try to push off the back of that ankle. But I did think that he was going to be back and more effective than the um, Tyron Smith, Smith with, in Dallas because the position that he does play. Look at those legs, though. Man. I need to get me a pair of shorts like that. No. Look, I can't stop looking at him. So thick. Uh, onto the Rams just You, you know what his nickname ago. is, Jenna? What? Thickness. Todd Gurley was named... Naming people. Thickness. Don't tell me. Offensive player. As long as they keep rolling his TV, I'll name what I want to. Get that right. Today, today Gurley looks like a guy who plays on offense. That joke would have been so much better had it just played out. No longer the centerpiece of the Rams game plan. Gurley is coming off a game where he had a career low five carries. A rumor of his arthritic knee holding him back and a multitude of questions on the daily. Todd Gurley's starting to get frustrated. Good game against Seattle last time. Uh, what do you remember about that game? Mm, I don't. I only remember it was last year. So, New Year, New Year. <laughs> I think I've asked you to you asked this question before, so take the answer I gave you last time. I don't remember you. Don't. Todd Gurley is subscribing to the less is more philosophy mm -hmm. very clearly. Nick, what do you make of Gurley's frustration? I watched that whole thing yesterday, and I felt it, it honestly made me a little sick to my stomach for him. 
Well, it, that's not who Todd Gurley's ever been. Some guys are super uncomfortable in front of the media. Some guys just mm. don't like talking. I'm just here so I don't get fined. Todd, there's a reason Todd Gurley's one of the NFL's leading pitchmen in advertisements. He's got a great personality. He's got a great smile. He always seems he always had seemed to be having fun. So what do you playing. see in there? I see a guy who knows what Chris knows. That what Chris's been saying is that he's damaged goods. He knows it. He's going to have to answer these questions. The only right now. The only enjoyable part of Todd Gurley's job, I would imagine, is every week when the direct deposit hits. And once you, he's been rich now for a couple years. It's not like all of a sudden he wakes up every Friday, he's like, oh, well, at least I'm rich. He's normalized the wealth. He's a rich guy who's, who's living the life of a rich guy. So the money doesn't feel as good as it would to someone who wasn't rich before, and then all of a sudden, it, and so he has to do this. He has to give answers that he can't tell the truth to. He has to ask, he has to, he, Ask himself, wait, am I ever going to be the guy I once was? And mm -hmm. he probably knows the answer to that, but doesn't want to answer that himself. This is a brutal spot for anyone. At that age, to, to be past his prime, to have peaked mm -hmm. in your life's work it, uh, your, before your 26th birthday? So that's what I saw yesterday. I don't, but I, people can say he was a little rude to the media. I don't care. This guy's dealing with things bigger than this, and there's nothing he can say. There is nothing he can say there other than what do you want uh, other than tell the truth, which I don't even know if he wants to tell himself right now. No, and this is something that athletes go through. Um, I try to train athletes that one thing we all got in common, we're going to leave here. You're going to leave this locker room. They're going to put that jersey typically on someone else. Someone else is going to be wearing number 30 with the Rams in a couple of years. But it's hard to have these conversations about your overall health. Because do I send a message to the opposition that I'm hurt? Do I send a message to the organization that I'm hurt? Because there's only two people that really know. That's Todd Gurley. He knows he's hurt. And the organization knows he's hurt. Why? Listen to their messaging over the last year. Listen to last year when they rested him. Why did they rest him? Hmm. Then the next game, his workload went up. Then after that, he couldn't consistently play two weeks in a row. So this offseason, what do they do? Not free agency. You can't go out and get a free agent. They went out in the draft, and that's how you do it. Top third, 100 pick. Third round, that's a high draft pick, and you bring someone like that into the locker room when you know you're having conversations with the organization. Don't you think they talked to Todd Gurley for a training camp? He said, ah, oh, Todd Gurley, you know something, man? We like you, man. You're one of the most popular guys in the league. You know what we're going to do for you this year? At training camp, you're only going to practice every other day. No, they were like, man, you know the workload. Your knee can't take it. He knows what he's doing in the offseason is not what he was doing two years ago. So it's a tough situation. The truth can't be told. And just like Cam Newton, Cam Newton said, listen, I'm tired. I'm tired of telling people, oh, I'm okay and everything. The first game of the season said he shouldn't have been out there. Week number two, he said he shouldn't have been out there. Now the reality that he's hurt, he's finally fessing up, telling the truth. And it's hard when you're in those locker rooms, when you got a lot of money on stuff, and people are trying to get a game plan for you. I'm not going to help people develop that game plan by telling them, yes, my arthritic knee, it's not getting any better. And what makes this, to me, so much more torturous for the player than a typical injury is it's not a typical injury. It's not that Todd Gurley in week 16 last year got, got a hit to his knee and tore his meniscus and he is still recovering from it. It is a condition. It is not an injury, it's a condition and that is different because you don't typically see guys who, at, in any age, at any whether they're sports or not sports, hey, guess what, my arthritis cured. Mm -hmm. That's not a thing. And so, and the only thing that possibly could make it at least lessen is an enormous amount of time off. It, it, enormous amount of, time, of rest that you simply can't take in the middle of an NFL season. So I think Todd Gurley, what you saw yesterday was a player who emotionally is dealing with his football mortality sure. at a way earlier time than he ever anticipated he would have to. And then he has to come off a game where he has five carries and then explain himself to the media. Mm -hmm. It is definitely hard all around. All right, let's move on to America's Game of the Week. You got the Packers taking on the Cowboys in Dallas on Sunday on Fox. Aaron Rodgers is 6-2 and two in his career against the Cowboys. And though A-Rod is operating under a new offense and might be without his top target, Devontae Adams, Cowboys linebacker Jalen Smith still wants everyone to know they're going up against, quote, the same Aaron Rodgers. CeCe, what should 
Dallas's plan of attack be against number 12? Um, I would dare him to run the ball. I don't believe that that, that Aaron Rodgers and, and, and Matt LaFleur, I believe this is, the hard, this is the most difficult game for Matt LaFleur in his young career. How do I go against this Dallas defense where I got to have some type of ball control? I got to be able to protect Aaron Rodgers. I don't have my best receiver. I was trying to develop some other receivers, and they're not developing, and I don't have a tight end that's really a tremendous a threat, especially outside of the red zone. Jimmy Graham is a threat in the red zone, yep. but as far as threatening the middle of the football field, so they're playing shorthanded. So I would, I would dare him to try to run Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones had his third best game as, as, as a, of his career against Dallas, rushed for 125, 19 carries. That's the only way they're going to be able to protect Aaron Rodgers. I believe Dallas has too many rushers, and I do believe that they will get the edge on Aaron Rodgers. That's how I would go after I would go after him, dare him. I would dare him to run the ball. I would play nothing but coverage. I mean, I only have four people, four defensive linemen, and I'm playing coverage, and I'm daring him to try to run. Because I don't believe Aaron Rodgers nor Matt LaFleur have the patience to methodically run it for four yards, run it again, throw a little screen pass, dink and dunk. I don't think that they can do that. See, most people would think that, you know something? Man, I'm going to go after Aaron Rodgers in blitzing. Don't do that because you make the throws and make his decision easy. If you put seven guys in the box, you play bump and run. I know exactly where to throw the ball compared to if they're in zone, how do I fit this one in there? What's the receiver going to do? Because I don't believe Aaron Rodgers and the backup wide receivers have any type of chemistry to be able to win a game like this one. Hey, you mentioned playing zone, and if you're not in zone, you, you, you double Martez Val, Mar Marquez Valdez-Scantling and dare any of these other guys to beat you. Marquez Valdez-Scantling probably doesn't have to be doubled, but he's the only receiver that Rodgers has any rapport with that Devontae Adams is out. And say, okay, Geronimo Allison, who doubled his season production with the one catch last week, the big 31-yard 30 30 yard gain, I think he had 27 Nick, yards. Nick, I can't let you game. continue with that. We can't put an extra guy on him. We ain't got no respect for him. So you don't I'm only doubling him. real receivers. Okay, all right. I was just saying you could just essentially and eliminate him from the game plan. You're saying you don't need to do that. No, absolutely. I would let, if he gets hot in the game, then we'll bring another guy over. But I'm daring him to throw it to a bunch of them. But if he's going to throw it to Valdez Scanlon, you know what he's going to do? He's going to throw it over some linebackers. He's going to have to throw it between some safeties. I believe that right there is far more difficult. Because if you double them, then I'm singling some people, which make the throws easier for Aaron. But the point about making them run the ball, listen, this is a team that their two top running backs, and Jamal Williams is injured at the moment. But Aaron Jones, Jamal Williams have carried the ball almost 90 times this year for less than 285 yards. So you're talking about 3.3 .3 yards per carry is what you are getting from those two guys when you thought... When Matt LaFleur is brought in, you thought, okay, they're spending money on defense. What LaFleur is going to give Aaron Rodgers, though, is a running attack where he doesn't have to simply rely on his arm. That running attack is yet to present itself this season. You mentioned Aaron Jones' great game against Dallas. That was the first great game of his career. That was his rookie season. Mm -hmm. Aaron Jones has been a guy who, prior to this year, had been a good yards per carry guy, but never a workhorse back. The Packers are not used to trying to run it down your throat but with no Devontae Devontae Adams is so important to what they do because he's the only receiver a that Rodgers has full faith in mm -hmm. and the only receiver that can I feel get himself open that doesn't have to be schemed open that can just mm -hmm. win yes. his battle so if you want to scheme guys open that's fine but to Chris's point if you're dropping seven into coverage there's you have to really trust those receivers to be in the exact right there spot. we go yes and I don't I haven't seen that trust with Aaron Rodgers because he has no rapport with any of these guys over the last couple years. Well, Packers are hoping there'll be some semblance of a psychological edge. They've won seven of the last eight games against Dallas, including the playoffs. All right, take a break. Coming up, who wins tonight, the Rams or the Seahawks? That's still ahead. This is First Things First.